Hi and welcome to AV Cyberactive. Today's topic of discussion is going to be DLP and how is it going to be very important in the field of cybersecurity for the year 2024. What are the seven ways it, it works? I'm going to explain it today. So stick till the end, it's because it's going to be a very interesting topic. Now DLP, how it works? Say for example, take an example of an envelope and a letter. Now, all we want to do is without opening the letter, we want to know what are the contents inside the letter or for ex we want more are interested in the content of the letter rather than the entire context. So, but there are many things to consider when you're, you know, doing the DLP thing because there's the letter size, there's the letter format, and there are many other things that you would have to consider. So how do you know, uh, you know, the content of the letter even without opening the letter? Number one, let's start with discussing that how DLP works is rule-based or regular expressions-based. So what happens in rules-based or regular expressions-based is, number one, it tries to filter through the regular expression based and will try to do a pattern matching. Say for example, you would have a 16 digit credit card number or your social security number. And in case of India, it will be Aadhaar card number. So when it will try to get an expression or it will try to get a pattern match, now, what will happen is it is the most common way of uh, diagnosing or uh, catching the DLP or using the DLP solution. However, the problem with this is it generates a large number of false positives. So say, for example, you match a credit card number or you were just giving some numbers that really matched a pattern of credit card. Now, this is very important because if you're using this, you must be ready to deal with a large number of false positives. So you'd have to fine tune your DLP solution in such a way that it is able to clear out the confusion between what is true positive and what's a false positive. Next is the database based filtering. In this kind of filtering for DLP, what happens is it tries to look at a large database and tries to compare with the database. So usually what happens is you will have a database of files and then objects and then um, expressions and then your uh, .txt, .java files, and so many things would be there in the Java, in the database. So what happens is the DLP solution will try to match any of the mm, files that have been found in the DLP solution based on what you have curated, and will try to match against the database. Now, in this kind of uh, solution, what you already know what will happen is it will try to look against the database, so there will be a lot of CPU utilization, and there will be a lot of performance uh, hit if you're trying to use this kind of uh, DLP filtering. Although what you should also consider is this type of filtering is useful when you have a huge database already and you would want to compare it against just that database and nothing else so that you don't take a really a hit, a big performance hit when it's trying to, DLP solution is trying to look up against the database. Okay, next one, how DLP works is based on the file matching. So, so this is now really easy to deal with or easy for the DLP solution to run. This is because it runs on hash matches. So if you'll have a file, how you verify the integrity of the file is by doing a hash match. Now, if there is a hash match, it'll be able to easily be able to find it. And there is relatively no you know, performance hit in kind of a hash, hash match. And the biggest advantage of running this one is you have a very low chance of running into false positive, which means if there's a hash match, it can be very easily be considered that it's a match. And if, uh, if you found a uh, you know, true positive match, and you can go ahead and do your incident analysis based on what you found in your DLP solution. Okay. Next one is a bit of a hit or a miss. So this one looks on a partial matching, uh, matching of a file. So how does it work? So say for example, you different different users have created a different different version of same files or there is a malware which is replicating itself and it has created different different versions of the same file. So if it has found one file to be malicious, it will try to do a partial match in your network or whenever a data is going outside, the data leakage prevention will try to see a partial match of that file. If it matches with something, then which means it has found, it has done a partial match of that file. So this is how it works. Now, the next approach is a bit conceptual and it's named as conceptual. So what happens here is it's a combination of rules and uh, the ones that have previously discussed. Um, they, it 
takes into consideration the size of the file and what does the text dictionary match and it's a combination of all of these so it'll try to you know based on all of these rules it's quite complex to achieve but based on all of these it'll try to uh, come match the patterns say for example it tried matching a certain number of files with a certain number of value or a file size and it combined it with a certain rule it had and then with the combination of all it tried to derive a concept that this file may be or may not be be malicious but then the down upside is it's doing a lot of pattern matching so you might be able to find something that is not really found anywhere the dlp is kind of like doing its own threat intelligence but the downside is you might get a lot of false positives as well so that's conceptual based dlp and how does it work next one does number six that is statistical based analysis so in stats based analysis what happens is it takes into consideration a lot of statistics like the volume of data coming in from a network and usually works on machine learnings and other statistical methods uh, to trigger the policy and violations of a secure content. This usually requires a huge volume of data that it wants to scan through and once it is scanned through, it will be much better for it to anal analyze. So you know, it's a statistics based uh, scanning. So the more data it has, the more patterns it will be able to see and more better it is for you so that you don't have a lot of false positives when you run your DLP solution. All right, next one, the last one is pre-built rules or pre-built categories. How it works is, say for example, if you have a set of servers or set of machines that you expect a certain type of data to come out. Say for example, you are payment processing industry, so you have PCI DSS. You are a healthcare industry, so you have HIPAA rules to follow. So these kind, any information that is coming out of these servers, you can put, you know, tag them or label them as a HIPAA or PCI. Uh, or a kind of financial information stored inside there. So any kind of an information that is going outside the server is coming inside the server. You can easily recognize that they are either, uh, you know, HIPAA based or PCI DSS based, and that way it'll be easy for your DLP solution to either stop the data from going outside or if anything is getting edited into your software. Uh, or, or or to your own those software so basically it really helps you to categorize your information based on the category uh, really easy hope that is clear now at last i'll say when you're trying to deploy a dlp solution you know i'm not going to uh, you know recommend you any software or anything like that you can get used to the software ui really fast and really quick but how you deploy it is what it depends now you may not have all of these in uh, built into your dlp solution but what is going to happen is you might end up using a lot of third-party solutions say for example for pattern-based matching if your dlp solution does not do that you might want to take help uh, of your dlp's api so that you can reach out to another database and do that hash match so it is a hit or a miss and a combination of a lot of these so you can consider these when you're trying to deploy a DLP solution there are a lot of vendors available nowadays who do all of that what's really important is what matches the goal of your organization what you're trying to do ask this question to your senior managers or your organizations that when they are trying to deploy a DLP solution what's the main goal is their goal to uh, stop just the data from going outside or is their data uh, you know you, they'll be sending it for further analysis to a forensic investigator or a security operations when they're trying to you know uh, deploy dlp solutions and of course cost is also a concern if you're trying to do a kind of an extensive pattern matching or database based matching there will be a lot of cpu utilization on your uh, dlp solution or on the memory of where you have deployed it so these are the things you should consider so mainly what when deploying a dlp solution you should consider is what are what is the main motive of deploying the dlp solution okay i hope i was able to help you with these seven pointers of how the dlp works and how it is really helpful in cybersecurity. if you want me to deliver more content like these let me know in the comments down below make it more interactive and i'll see you on the next one until then bye now